Hey guys, so welcome to part 3 aka the final part of painting my mural. So to start this off, I went ahead and painted the stones in this warm brown um, tan color. In order to create a more three-dimensional piece, it's really important to have the contrast between warm and cool and dark and light. So having this sort of warm tan color against the grayer um, cool tone stones on the bottom left would really emphasize that sort of three-dimensional feeling. So like with the rest of the mural, I started with a more watered down version of my paint just because I'm working on this very textured piece of wood and I want to make sure I get all the white completely covered and that now will show through in the final piece, final result. So while we have this painting going on, I wanted to explain my mural a little bit, um, mainly why I chose to paint what I did since I haven't really explained that part. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I'm painting Machu Picchu. It's one of the seven wonders of the world and it's located in Peru. So I'm Peruvian, but I've actually spent my entire life in the very sunny state of California. And there's a certain level of disconnect that comes from not living in the country that you're from. As much as California is my home and always will be, it was very difficult, especially as a kid, because I didn't quite fit in despite living in a predominantly Latino community. Most of my life, I've had to explain to people where Peru even is. So there comes this like sort of sense of longing almost um, in regards to Peru of wanting to actually be there versus, you know, just learning about it through stories and pictures because it isn't really the same. Um, so while visiting Peru isn't really an option for me right now, this mural lets me have a little piece of it with me. So in addition to this sort of light tan color, I also mix that same paint with some white to make the highlights. And I did this to further level, to further that level of contrast. And that's just something that's kind of like been ingrained in me from like a professor I had in university. Uh, one of the things I remember most of him explaining is that it's not just the colors you choose, it's the different levels of value that really decide whether your piece is readable or not. And I really wanted to make sure that whether you were up close or far away from the mural, that you can really make it sort of like this three-dimensional piece that sort of comes to life in a way. And to me, really emphasizing the values and the contrast between them was the best way to go about that. Okay, hey guys, it is very windy today, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, I did realize though, these sort of like dark parts that I did the other day are not dark at all. Um, they look a lot darker, like up close, but far away, it just doesn't read at all whatsoever. Um, so I will be making those darker. I do have leftover paint that I put in a little Tupperware, um, but this is like the dark color that doesn't really read. So instead, I'm gonna use this as sort of like the lighter color that I'm supposed to have here, and then I'll make a darker color with the actual shadows.
Okay, so I've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to be like a lighter brown. Um, so now I've mixed in the leftover brown that I had with some more black. I know it looks kind of crazy, but I promise you it's gonna work. Um, so yeah, everything's pretty much covered, so I'm gonna start working on the shadows. So even though I did want these sort of like cool gray stones against the warm brown, I felt like it was too big of a jump from this warm brown tan color to straight up gray. So what I did is I watered down my paint a lot and quickly washed over it. That way the gray, even though it still is gray, has a little bit more of a brown tone to it. So it fits a little better and it looks a little bit more cohesive with everything else. So here's how we were looking at the end of that day. I got a lot of work done for the amount of time I was outside. I felt like everything was really coming together. So this day I started working on the shadow areas for the greenery. Um, I decided to make a green that was a little bit less saturated than the dark green that I used on the actual mountain. It's a little bit more of like, I guess like an army green kind of thing. Um, I still wanted a dark green and I still wanted something that would look cohesive with everything else. But I didn't want it to feel sort of, I guess get lost. In a sense, I wanted it to stand out while still fitting in. I know that sounds weird and probably doesn't make sense, um, but I feel like it does in my head. So. Moving on, for most of this day, I did end up using that smaller brush, so it did take me a lot longer than I would have liked, um, but it was just hard to really get into all the nook and crannies with the wider brush that I got used to using. So you can kind of see here, I had solidified most of the middle portion, and I really only had the mountain side on the left and then the bottom part to really do most of the work on.
So once I had pretty much all the dark green covered, I went ahead and went back to the actual mountain. Um, the original green I used was kind of a lime green and I felt like that was a little bit too big of a jump from the dark kind of emerald-ish green that I used for the shadow. Um, so I went ahead and made a slightly darker green and covered the light green portions up, especially because the light green was still somewhat patchy because it was a sort of like quick watered down pass that I did at the very start of this mural. Okay guys, so here's how we're looking so far. I did make this darker, which I really like. I still have to um, finish the green up there, but I'm gonna worry about that later. Right now I wanna finish everything down here, which is pretty much make making more of this sort of like darker brown, almost grayish kind of color to fill up these empty spaces. That way the bottom part is just finished and I can just like never look at it again. Um, especially right here, there's still like a lot of empty parts which I don't like. So the first thing that I focused on was really working on the shadows for all of the stone portions. I made this gray, slightly blue um, color that I used for all the shadows of the stone so I use it here and I use it in a couple of different parts of this mural So I did end up adding some extra shadows that I hadn't originally drawn in there. Um, I felt like there was a lot of empty space and visually it was kind of lacking a little bit. So while looking at my reference, I just freehanded some couple of extra shadows, keeping everything sort of simple, abstract almost.
So at this point, I pretty much had the stones done. Um, there were some bits of this that I unfortunately didn't film because my phone was running out of battery. But um, I got to a point where I was pretty happy and I decided I was going to move on to the greenery next. Um, there were some areas where they just needed to be a little bit more of a solid green. Some areas I just haven't painted green yet, so that was pretty much what I was focusing on on this part. So I did end up changing the color of these two sort of front ledges, stones, not really sure what to call it. Um, partly it was because they were two different colors and that was kind of throwing me off. And I also just had some extra paint from another part of this mural and I felt like it would be best put to use in this part. So this is how we look like at the end of it. I was really liking how it was looking so far and the bottom portion was pretty much done. So the final day, it was just me fixing the sky. I had so much issue with the sky since I painted it light blue in the first place. Um, even though the light blue does kind of read from close up, from far away, you could not see that the sky was painted at all, you could not see the clouds. Um, so I did end up painting it a darker, well, not darker, it is still a baby blue kind of color, but a lot darker than the original light blue that I painted. It is a little bit darker than I would have liked, um, but at that point, I felt like I had committed to the color um, so I really just went for it. Also, I am using a big-ish brush, not my bigger brush that I would have liked using, um, frankly, because it was being kind of useless to me. Um, it was soaking up all the paint, but not really putting any on the wood. So I just had to go back and use the regular um paintbrush that I would typically use on a canvas. So just a few notes um, as we're coming to the end of this video. There are still quite a few things that I would like to change slash add to the mural. There's still a lot of the big white empty spaces that are on the side triangles. Um, there are some like minor details that I wish I would have added to the actual mural. Um, that being said, I did love every second of this. It was so much fun to work on something this large of a size, which isn't really something I've done before. I've done something kind of big once, but that was a few years ago, and nothing like that since then so it was a nice change of pace um again like i said there are some things that i 
want to change or add or wish I would have done differently. But that being said, it was a really enjoyable experience making this mural and I am really content and just happy with the end result and the fact that it's come to life in a much better way than I would have imagined in the first place. Um, so yeah, here is the finished mural and thank you guys so so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed.